week number two of the Destiny Group Mentor School. I want to remind those of you online that you can download the study sheet that we're using tonight. Go to rickkindle.org org, org, and download the study sheet by clicking the Destiny Group button and it'll take you to that Destiny Group Mentor School page where you can see the study sheet. Download it and you'll have a sheet just like we do here tonight. And I think this is going to be valuable to have this. So welcome to the class, even if you're viewing from all parts of the world. And how's everybody doing here tonight? Good. Okay. Amen. So we're going to start off uh, with my honey coming up, Dr. Liz Kendall. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and she's going to be sharing a few minutes on Kingdom Principle, and then I'm going to come and share about tonight's class. So welcome. Well, thank Amen. you. And welcome, everybody. Yay! Let me do that. We are so excited because this uh, class is going to have an impact in so many ways. And uh, in people that are listening to us and watching us through online, and also the ones that are here that are. Um, also working for their certificate or for their accreditation for these classes to have a degree. So we're excited. And you know, this is, this is so timely because there are so many teachings out there and it's getting a little bit out of hand. <laughs> and so what we, what we have is we have the word. Amen. Amen. We know that if the word is there and it's in context, we know that that's God and that's yes, the Holy amen. Spirit mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit does lead us to all truth. Amen. So we are excited to share the truth, the truth of God. I call mine the kingdom reign, but it's still the, the, the uh, destiny group. Uh, I wanted to tell you my um, testimony on how I came into the awareness that I am in a kingdom. What is my purpose here? What am I doing here? Right? Why? Why are we here? Are we here just to, to be born, to pay bills, and to die? <laughs> that doesn't sound like purpose to me. So there's a deeper purpose. And when we know what, who we are in Christ, and that we are in the kingdom, and that we're citizens of the kingdom. Now, it's great to be a child of God. We're all child, we would always be children of God. Mm -hmm. That's how we come into the kingdom, as children. That's what the Bible says, mm -hmm. right? We come into uh, as children because we, we it, it, you know, how the kids are when they come into something. They're all full of wonder. They're all excited. They're, you know, they want. They are. They they're excited about this Jesus mm -hmm. that they just met, right? And and that's how we are. But also after that, we need to grow. That's right. And we need to develop into who, uh, finding out who we are and develop into mature children which are no longer children. God still calls us children. There's yes. that Jay, my son there, he's still our child, but he doesn't want to be called a child because he's, he's mature and mm -hmm. he's mature and he's growing up. So that's how God is with us. So then we realize we're in something very big and we have assignments from God and we want to know what those assignments are Amen. and how to grow up into the head, Jesus Christ, Amen. so that we can be could be called mature saints and overcomers. So I remember telling my husband, I, I was working at TBM, and I think that was right short before I met you. And uh, I was listening to this to this guy preach, and I thought, oh, that sounds like my husband. That that sounds like my husband. So I told you about him, and I think you already have heard about him, Miles Monroe. And I was sitting there at TBM with all the you know all the um, all the other preachers that were preaching. And I told my husband, honey, um, this guy preaches just like you. He's saying the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the Holy Spirit. So um, you met him and you brought him here to this area. And uh, so my, I'm done, by the way. But <laughs> my, my mentor in the kingdom has been my husband. Mm -hmm. And he started to teach me and we started to share together. And that was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we are discovering new things every day in God Amen. that we didn't know before, Amen. but that 
that we knew that we knew inside That's of us. Right. Amen. That you know that you know that you know, and it's inside of you, and we already been predisposed to receive it. Amen. That's Amen. the kingdom of God. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, I think those first five minutes are going to be great each week because it sets the stage. On week number two, really last week, we just shared about what the school is going to be uh, about. But this week, we're getting into the, the meat. And uh, we're talking about, in this 11 weeks, the purpose and vision of a kingdom ambassador. We're going to talk tonight about rediscovery of who and why we are through understanding God's kingdom. And I want to just give you a basic overview. And those of you with your sheets can see it there. The basic overview of God's kingdom in a nutshell uh, is the king has a kingdom. Simple. Yeah. How many of you think it was simple so far? The king has a kingdom. The kingdom is a rule, it's a realm, and it's a reign that equals dominion. By the way, how many of you still believe the king is on the throne? Amen. No matter what it looks like on the earth. So, number two, because the king has a kingdom, the kingdom is a nation with one government, one constitution, and one economy. This is why we talk in terms of of government and not religion uh, because when we say religion of course to feed the uh, the homeless and the widows and those kind of things that's good religion amen that's pure religion. that's pure religion undefiled so I'm not putting down religion altogether or even putting it down I'm saying when we say religion is not what we're talking about here I'm saying the traditions of men that have come outside of the Word of God how many of you believe there's a lot of teaching out there that God didn't put in his word? Amen. Yes, and so that's what we have to understand. God wants us to be as accurate as possible uh, in his word because we're his ambassadors. Right. We're not representing ourselves. So the king has a kingdom. The kingdom is a nation with one government, one constitution, and one economy. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. The kingdom of God is one nation, or ethnos. The Greek word is ethnos. One people. He is, he, his kingdom is a nation of nations. Oh, yes. Amen? One people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say nations, we're talking about tribes, culture, people. Have you noticed you hang around people for a reason? Sometimes we're forced to hang around with some people, right? But you, you, you like to, to hang around certain people for a reason. It's because they speak to you. They speak to your uh, purpose and your destiny. And people as citizens of God's kingdom are ambassadors called on various levels. We are ambassadors, but you better not probably try to go over to Germany and just say, I'm an ambassador. <laughs> because they might, uh, you know, uh, not appreciate that. So we have various levels. And God has given us various uh, degrees of assignment. So now, number five, ambassadors are commissioned and equipped as his embassy. The church is his embassy on the earth. Amen. Now, some of you may know some of this and some of you watching uh, know that I've taught some of this for years, but I like to lay a foundation. Mm -hmm. How many of you believe it's important? Yes. That we really understand, even if we've heard it before, where we're going with this. But ambassadors are sent out to colonize the kingdom into the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not to colonize a certain denomination, but to colonize the kingdom. Yeah. So, ambassadors are sent out to colonize the kingdom into all the world. Jesus said, take this gospel of the kingdom into all the world. Now, how can we miss what he said? Because a lot of times we just specialize in bringing it into the church. He said, but take it into all the world. Mm -hmm. 
So we have to know how to be effective as ambassadors. Some of you may know this already that have been in my class, but an ambassador is not even fully activated until they're on foreign soil. If an ambassador stays in the embassy, he's not going to do anybody any good. So an ambassador is activated when he's on foreign soil. And so they have an embassy, there's other names for it, in other lands. And so we represent the kingdom of God. We represent the king, his name is Jesus. Amen? So I wanted to kind of give you a little groundwork here because, you know, I, I know some people that say kingdom all over the place, but I, I, I don't see that they have an understanding. They just try to apply it to old wineskins. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Are you all praying for me? <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. In that regard, reconciliation, restoration, and renovation is God's plan to bring us back to the original blueprint. You know, we're in such a corrupt system that we think it's normal. We think a lot of things that goes on in society is normal because it's accepted. Yeah. But it's crooked. It's corrupt. Yeah. And have you ever noticed when the light shines on it, the roaches flee? Mm -hmm. They scatter. <laughs> they, they scatter. scatter. So next time you go to a restaurant, make sure it's not the lights aren't dim because of the roaches. <laughs> they say it's ambiance, but it might be. Well, okay. So here we go. This is setting the stage because now how do you fit in to yeah. this whole thing? Like Liz said, we're not supposed to just live, work, eat, and die. Mm -hmm. You know, we have purpose. Yes, God-ordained purpose yes. mm -hmm. that is inside of every one of us, but sometimes has been pushed down to where we can't see it. Because people are intimidated or they're threatened or the corrupt systems are afraid you're going to shine too bright. Mm -hmm. But reconciliation, restoration, and renovation is God's plan to bring his original blueprint back into his planet. Now, we know the devil thinks he, he has control of this planet, but he's a deceiver so much that he's deceived himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of you still believe yes, the yes. earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof? Yes, amen. Yes. Now, we have to, though, be agents of change. Mm -hmm. You might want to write that down. Agents of change to bring what change the light brings. And not everybody's going to appreciate it. <laughs> so, when we're talking about all of this, where do you fit in? Where do you fit in? This is what this school is here for. This is why I have a passion mm -hmm. to, to do this school and, and it's going to increase. How many of you know we're going to have classes? Yes. Yes. Me meaning more classes. Amen? Amen. Because then you go out and teach. You'll go out and share things that will far excel anything that we've talked about. Yeah. Because the kingdom is like an ever unfolding yes. flower. Mm -hmm. So in Eden, as you know, this is all setting the foundation tonight. In Eden, Adam and Eve trespassed by taking ownership instead of stewardship. You can narrow it down, boil it down to the fact that what the devil did in twisting his words was to convince Eve and then Adam that God said something he didn't say yeah, exactly. about real estate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tree was real estate. I told our class the other night, Real estate is real mm -hmm. estate. <laughs> what does that mean? Anybody remember in your Bible that it says the angels, the third of the angels lost their first estate? estate. Mm -hmm. They lost their first position. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So real estate is God's ownership on the property, around the property, above the property. Are you ready for this? And underneath the property. Mm -hmm. And God says, I want you to take the land for me. How many of you are ready? Mm -hmm. Amen. We've got authority we haven't even exercised. Because we thought we just have to put up with this world. So Adam and Eve trespassed. Their sin could be summed up in that they took ownership instead of stewardship. He actually said, yes, possess. But as my steward. They had dominion. Can you imagine? They could name animals. And what they named those animals, that's what the animal became. Oh, what? Amen, Sarah. Amen. <laughs> Talk about, you know what? If I have a choice between ownership and access, I'm going to take access. Because God is the owner, but he says, I've given you access to all I have. Oh, yes. oh come on, somebody. Amen. So we've been given a great position, but Adam and Eve listened to the deception of the devil taking God's words and twisting it, and then they trespassed at a tree. Let me just throw this out here too. I said this in class the other night down in Lake Worth. Adam sinned at a tree. Jesus died on a tree. Are you thankful? Are you glad? Amen. And guess what? At the end of the book of Revelation 22, it all ends up at a tree. Mm -hmm. The tree of life. Tree of life. Mm -hmm. God restores yes, everything. Yes, God has been in the plan of restoring ever since Adam lost dominion. Mm -hmm. Eden had the first borders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before Mexico and the United States had borders, <laughs> Before there were borders in Russia and Poland, man's trespass caused angels to bring the first border. You cannot come back in. They lost dominion. They lost covering. They lost citizenship. Producing their identity. So they experienced, are you ready for this? Identity theft. They lost their identity. God didn't do that. Man chose that scenario. But God already had a plan to bring it back. Hallelujah. So look at point B on your sheet there. The result of Adam and Eve's trespass, creation had dominion over mankind. Next, as a result of Adam and Eve's trespass, there came a debt system. Now you can make debt work for you. I know that. But I'm talking about people that have become debt-minded. Yes. That is cause of Adam's trespass and transgression. Debt system. The process of always paying for yesterday, today. Hmm. Isn't it interesting that debt, that sin, yeah. Yeah. is always in company with debt? Now, I'm not saying if you're in debt, you have sin. No, no, <laughs> but I'm saying Jesus saved us from the sin or the debt of sin. But he also saved us from the debt of debt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants to turn the curse around to a blessing. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. Through Jesus' birth, we call him the second Adam. Some people say the last Adam. Through the second Adam, Jesus, the angels declared something. What did they declare? Peace. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Goodwill towards men. Jesus' birth was a declaration of peace. His declaration, everybody say declaration. declaration. His declaration was peace on earth. earth. Not just peace in heaven, but now peace on earth. earth. Goodwill toward men. He didn't say men were going to have will, goodwill back right away. 
because we know that there was a king that tried to kill Jesus and others, even as a baby. But you know what they didn't like? Not that he was a baby, but that they called him king. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't call him a religious name. They called him what? King. <laughs> a governor. I don't, they didn't like that mm -hmm. yeah. because they thought I'm the king. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus activated peace on earth. Peace is, if you want to write it somewhere in your notes, is not just the absence of noise. Peace is to be perfectly joined together with God's blueprint. Peace is to be perfectly joined together with God's blueprint. So, do you want, want the modern word for peace? We're in sync. Jesus' birth activated the sync of his creation, S-Y-N-C, to be in sync with the creator and his creation, the way he initially planned it in his blueprint. That's peace. Activating the sync of his creation back to the original blueprint, causing immediate reaction from the devil and corrupted systems. Peace. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, now we've all known this scripture for ever since we were born again. If any man be where? In Christ. In Christ. Mm -hmm. What happens? He is a new creation. Yes, sir. He's in the process of being restored back to the original yes, blueprint. Yes. Old things are passed away, are passed away mm -hmm. by beholding all things are become, become new. Become doesn't mean it's instantly we're there. Become means it's a process. I'm becoming. Yes. Yes. My be that God sees is coming. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. I'm beginning to understand who I am. Amen? Amen. Amen. Woo! All right. Now, let's look at this. I mean, you see, we got a lot of material over the next few weeks. Are y'all excited? Yes. yes. How about online? Are y'all excited? Our new life is a rediscovery of our purpose. Yes. It's the genesis of who we are in Him. I'm in His image, not somebody else's. Amen. And we've got to understand that because there's so many people right now that don't know who they are. They just don't know who they are. Our new life is a rediscovery of our purpose, the genesis of who we are in Him. So, literally, I want you to see this. The word genesis, as you see on your sheet there, is defined as the original beginning. Who are you really? Do you even know who you are? I'm still finding out who I am in Him. There's things that I would have never thought I would be starting a, a college or a mentor school because I know what I was like in school. <laughs> but I didn't know me very well then. <laughs> Amen? How many believe God's going to surprise you yes, and introduce you, you to you you, you didn't know it was you? Yes, you say, well, I've been in the way for a long time. Well, you know what? He can still surprise you yes, and yes. show you things. Yes. Amen. Amen. So Genesis is defined as the original beginning. Eden because we're not talking about going back to the original garden, although I believe that's what he's doing through the blueprint. But Eden is defined as the environment of a domain. We need to take authority for the king. And the garden is defined as the atmosphere. So Eden is the environment and the garden is the atmosphere or our stewardship. We have to cultivate an environment in our life so the atmosphere of God can come. We are stewards. Psalm 51 and 5 says, because a lot of people say, well, you know, Dr. Rick, I was shaping in iniquity. 
That's why I do what I do. I just seem tend to sin, and that's why I do. But you know what? Enough of that. Yes. Because we may have been shaping in iniquity, mm -hmm. but we were not designed in iniquity. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen? Mm -hmm. Sin misshapened us, but it wasn't our original design. So, Psalm 51 and 5 says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, but we're not designed in iniquity. God constituted you, as you see on your sheet there, before he instituted you. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. He knew you're in from your beginning. That's true. Amen. Yeah. So our purpose and destiny is personal. You see there on your sheet. Personal, powerful, and prophetic. People have come to a point to where, who am I? And it's, it's, I'm going to say something, it's the church's responsibility as the embassy of God to help them find out who they are. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. amen. You know, I'm glad that we, we have people follow our leadership and they come and they help us build great things. But our main purpose is not us, it's them. Yes. It's to help them find out who they are. Because mm -hmm. once they find out who they are oh, in yes. Him, so, thank you, Jesus. they will change the yes, world. Change Can you say amen? Yes, one man, sin entered in. But one man, salvation entered in. Yeah. And He yes. says, now greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to the Father. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. we haven't even tapped into it yet. So let me kind of round it up with this. Are y'all good? Yes. Yes. We're having a good time. Yes. yes. All right. Vision is always going to be attached to purpose. Vision is the eyes of our purpose. Not the product. Hmm. I have a vision. And this is what we're going to do. <laughs> do. Well, you're talking about product when you don't know who you are. A lot of people producing a lot of things, but they still don't know who they are. So vision is the eyes of purpose, not the product, but a what? A preview of what the seed will produce. Vision is not what. Vision is why are you going to do it? Amen. Vision involves purpose. Purpose is as you see there on your sheet, the person and the purpose is who we are. This is why, this is my passion for the school. How many believe the passion is pretty clear? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The purpose is clear. Amen. Yes. Amen. I want people to make a discovery. Yeah. You know, we're not, even though we'll share a lot of knowledge and insights and inspiration and, and uh, revelation. Hallelujah. My goal is not to just dump a lot of things on you all but it's to dig the treasure out. Yes. I want to be an archaeologist. Amen? Thank you. Because there's treasure in you that you don't even know you have in you. In me as well. The person is who we are and we have purpose. Purpose is who you are. Passion. Notice passion I put before vision. Passion is how I'm driven. Passion is a hint to your purpose. Passion is not your purpose, mm -hmm. but passion gives you a hint to your purpose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. There's a lot of people who went after passion yeah. thinking it was their purpose, and they ended up burning out. Yeah, because it's fire. <laughs> but when you realize, wait a minute, that passion is just a hint. That's good. Now I need to That's go on good. a full-blown discovery. Mm -hmm. It's good. We're going to get into mystery and a search, man. It's going to be awesome. So, vision comes after passion. How many of you have ever, before you even had get got a handle on your vision, you just felt something inside going on? Yeah, burning, yeah. You feel that tonight, don't yeah, you? Yeah. I mean, I think there's people on here that are going to say, oh, something's going on inside of me. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's it's passion. Good. I don't know why, just, you know, somebody will say, I've always loved working with kids. I've always loved, you know, sharing the gospel with kids. Well, that may not be your purpose, but it sounds like a passion. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, passion has to, is driven. Passion is driven, but it better be driven by purpose. 
if you go after your passion and don't really look for your purpose, you could drive off into error. Passion will drive you. Vision is why I am. Vision is not what I want to do. Vision is why do I want to do it. Amen. I'm not in the ministry because I wanted to get a big name or a big church or whatever. I had to identify why, why am I in ministry? Well, I just saw a lost and dying world that need the kingdom of God. Amen. So that becomes your mission statement because mission is what you do. So purpose is who we are. Passion is how I'm driven. Vision is why, the why of who I am. And mission is what I do. I've seen too many young guys go after the mission first. And they burn out. Because they they didn't understand. Well, wait, I did this because I saw another guy that was successful doing it. And I'm doing it for the Lord. So why is it I'm burning out? Why are they leaving the ministry in droves? Identity theft. Are y'all? Amen? Amen. So God wants us to know who we are. Then we find the company that we're supposed to keep. We love everybody, but God is going to give you a company. How many of you receive that right now? Yes. Amen. How I accomplish my destiny because I can't do it all, all by myself. No. The people that are going to interconnect to me. Amen. That help me accomplish my purpose yes. as I help them accomplish theirs. Yes. We need to be servant driven. My goal is to serve you. The more I serve you in your purpose, then the more God will help me find mine. Yes, amen. That's a kingdom principle. The purpose process transforms us. <laughs> yes. My purpose is to transform the world. Guess what? He's going to start with you. You. <laughs> he wants to transform you. The purpose process transforms us. It transitions us. It transfers us. And then it translates us. Hallelujah. Now, in the Bible, if you read it, he didn't say someday we'll be translated. It says we've already been translated from the kingdom of dark or from the darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Half already. Mm -hmm. So what does translation mean? We understand mm. the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. We start speaking language. kingdom language. Come on, somebody. Wow. Amen. Yeah. We begin to talk like the king talks. Yes. We begin to speak like the king speaks. Yes. Because now yes. purpose has brought us to a place of translation. <laughs> now I can translate what the kingdom is about into a an effective way yes. that reaches the world. I'm not going to go and try to wow them with all kinds of high you know, snootiness, but I'm going to share on their level and be like yeast and dough. Yeah. I'm going to go in yes. and influence yeah, all right. the world. Amen. That's how. With the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. If you identify with what you can in their world, not compromise, but identify just like Jesus did with his culture down here on the earth with those <laughs> he talked to, not his culture, but theirs, then they will open up. Uh, yeah. How many of you believe if you ask somebody, hey, Something you know, that is relevant to them. what is your passion? I'm going to tell you right there, it opens them up. Yeah. What's your passion? And then you just see almost something happen, a dynamic. Yeah. Amen. The yeah. anointing begins to open yes. them up and say, you know what? I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. It's been great having you in class Good number two. Yeah. And we say to the Good king. king.